The next pulley is easy to find and cheap enough, but only 3 millimeters larger than my stock Minarelli pulleys. It comes from the popular 139QMB 4-stroke engines, and I've seen them for around $30 shipped. The increase in diameter is negligible, and since the 139QMB uses an 18mm wide belt, the pulley won't squeeze the bando or Melosi belts at its outer edges. So why bother with it? Because it's got straight torque driver grooves cut at 44 degree angles, similar to what many performance pulleys use. These are even cut to the full usable length in stock form, although not all are. Some pulleys for these engines use slightly curved grooves as well, so it can be risky buying one if you aren't sure what you're getting. The Minarelli clutch would fit, but the pulley couldn't open all the way because it hit the clutch. I found a large washer that was 1.25 millimeters thick and modified it to fit over the shaft to space the clutch out further from the pulley so it no longer limited travel. The overrange contra spring wouldn't fit, so I used the same 1000 RPM 139 QMB spring that I used with a Melosi kit at the beginning of the project. The next problem was that the clutch bell made contact with the nut securing the clutch to the pulley and it didn't rotate freely. I used 2.8 millimeters worth of washers under the bell so it would spin without friction. Then the assembly would fit the drive shaft and rotate easily, but the 4 millimeters of spacing added didn't allow all of the threads to show for the clutch nut. I decided it would be good enough for the brief use I had planned, but it would be wise to find a solution if the pulley were to be used long term. When I installed the cover there was another issue. The bell was sitting so far out that it was right up against the cover, and the clutch nut was pressing up against the drive shaft support bearing. I used a grinding stone to create a little clearance for the clutch bell. Then I ground roughly one millimeter off of the clutch nut so it didn't touch the cover. This cover was made so the bearing wouldn't go in totally flush, so this may be a non-issue with other covers. Finally the cover fit and the pulley moved easily. I installed the Melosi variator and belt, and there was a lot of slack just like using a stock pulley. Belt alignment was as good as stock. I switched to the bando belt to see if takeoff would improve without so much slack. Sure enough, the shorter belt got the scooter moving better, but it still seemed a bit slow to get RPM up off the line. 0 to 40 mile per hour times were over a second and a half quicker. RPM rose to 9,300 to 9,400 at 50 miles per hour. Cruise speed went down to 48 miles per hour average. There were 4.84 millimeters of travel remaining after going 52 miles per hour at 94 to 9,500 RPM. I swapped out the overrange variator to give the Hoka a try. 
I only used the bando belt after bad results from two different pulleys with a longer belt. off the line until it settled in at 8,700 RPM and up to 9,000 RPM at 40 miles per hour. Zero to 40 times were almost six tenths of a second slower than using the overrange variator at 13.38 seconds on average. RPM stretched just beyond 9,300 at 50 miles per hour with average cruise speeds of 48 miles per hour. The variator had a 3.65 millimeter mark remaining from a speed of 51 miles per hour at 9,400 RPM. The 139 QMB pulley provided similar 0 to 40 times as the modified stock pulley, but with higher RPM at speed and slower starts. The last pulley I tried was a direct replacement performance pulley made by Hoka. I bought it as part of a complete clutch and pulley assembly for over $100, so it's not a cheap option, but you could find torque drivers that work with the rest of a stock pulley to have something similar for under $50. It's the same diameter as a stock pulley at 115 millimeters, but it has three sets of straight grooves in the torque driver at 40, 42, and 44 degrees. The Hoka torque driver was unmarked, so I used a spring-loaded center punch to dot the grooves for identification at a glance. You may also find it easier to distinguish greater or lesser angles by turning the pulley sideways as shown. I started off using the 40 degree grooves along with the overrange variator and bando belt. came up to 8,800 to 9,100 up to 40 miles per hour. 0 to 40 averaged 12.78 seconds, on par with some of the better times from stock-sized pulleys. By 50 miles per hour, RPM rose to 9,300 to 9,400. Average cruising speed was 48 miles per hour. There was a 5.5 millimeter mark left from a speed of 52 miles per hour at over 9,400 RPM. I gave the Hoka Variator a chance with a Hoka rear pulley as well. similar to the overrange variator, but there was a little less RPM spread. 0 to 40 mile per hour times averaged 13.04 seconds. RPM was 9,200 at 50 miles per hour with an average cruise speed of 48 miles per hour. There was a 4.39 millimeter mark after going 51 miles per hour at just over 9,200 RPM. The Hoka Variator worked about as well as the Overrange Variator using the Hoka Rear Pulley. I couldn't dial in the Hoka exactly where I wanted it because a quarter gram of weight changed RPM by about 200, while a half gram changed the Melosi by 100 RPM. I think the Hoka Variator could match the Melosi 0 to 40 times with RPM just right, and it already paralleled the Melosi elsewhere. Still, it's hard to call it an equal since the Overrange Variator was easier to tune. My final test was a quick one to see how the torque driver's steepest angled grooves compared to the narrow angles I was using. I switched to the 44 degree grooves and went back to the Melosi variator and bando belt. I had to use 0.5 gram heavier roller weights to keep RPM similar to what it was with the 40 degree grooves. Mm. 
The RPM spread was about 100 RPM less to 40 using the steeper angles. 0 to 40 times dropped by over half a second to one of the better averages of all tests. By 50 miles per hour, RPM was the same as with the 40 degree grooves, so there was less spread from 0 to 40, but more RPM changed from 40 to 50 miles per hour. There were 5.09 millimeters left over from a speed of 51 miles per hour at 93 to 9400 RPM. Even though most numbers were close, the 0 to 40 results show that it pays to put the time into tuning if you expect the most from your combo. The Hoka rear pulley was a bit better than similar sized pulleys for acceleration, but not as good as some at keeping RPM in check at speed. That wraps it up for the testing, so now the question is, what can we learn from all of this? One thing that became apparent is why the best overrange kits are more than just one pulley or a longer belt. Just add a long belt, and the slack will slow you down on the low end, and you would risk the belt coming off of the pulleys at speed. Pulleys being larger, without a belt to take advantage of the increased diameter, won't extend the range of gearing. Using only one much larger pulley along with a belt that reaches its outer edges, is likely to show improvements on one end, accompanied by negative results on the other. I could use the overrange variator and belt to gain more control over RPM at higher speeds, but acceleration was no good from a stop using stock sized pulleys with no tension on the belt at low speed. The 139 QMB pulley also showed some of the importance of controlling the belt. It was intended for wider belts and didn't squeeze the Minarelli belt very well at its outer edges. It struggled to get moving compared to pulleys with a similar diameter and configuration. If you increase the width of the belt, then you may have trouble making it reach the center of the variator, which also hinders takeoff. Getting the most from a CVT requires a balance between all components. The overrange kit by Melosi proved that by beating all other combinations by a half second from 0 to 40 miles per hour and prevailing by more than a second over the majority. It also accomplished the smallest RPM spread up to 50 miles per hour to keep the engine at peak power the best. The straight grooved Marini pulley was large enough to use the overrange belt without bogging at launch and its best 0 to 40 was exactly one second slower than the Melosi. It controlled RPM pretty well, and even seemed to shift and drop RPM after 50 miles per hour. For $50 and a bit of effort, it was a good performer, but wearing down belts disqualifies it as a choice for regular riders unless you can solve the alignment issues. The Piaggio pulley had more diameter than needed when working with the overrange variator and belt that I used, but you would need a wider belt to make use of its full size, assuming you could fit it under the cover. It took some effort to make it fit, but belt alignment was close enough that it didn't wear the belts prematurely. It turned in 0 to 40 times consistently better than any rear pulley aside from the Melosi, and was capable of keeping RPM in check at speed about as well as any pulley I used. I think the near 0 degree angles in the end of its torque driver grooves may be detrimental to low powered setups, but could work well with more engine output. The Piaggio would be my choice for an overrange rear pulley alternative, but from the sources I've seen, its cost is too close to a genuine overrange pulley to me. If you catch a good sale on a Melosi kit, you could have it for about the same price as the Piaggio pulley and the rest of the kit, and it did outperform the Piaggio pulley. The 139 QMB pulley would not be my choice over even a stock pulley. It's not large enough to have any overrange effect, too wide with a standard Minarelli belt, and had fitment issues. It's cheap, and it's got straight torque driver grooves, but its performance wasn't on par with even a modified stock pulley. The Hoka rear pulley outperformed its stock-sized counterparts with a fairly tight RPM spread, but it's of no use as an overrange pulley. If you're just looking for a straight groove torque driver to control RPM, it will do the job, but consider buying a torque driver alone that works with a stock fixed half and you could get a similar product for less money. The modified stock rear pulley worked fine with standard length belts, and it's hard to complain about something that's free if you've got the time and tools. But again, it's not a replacement for an overrange pulley. 
the Hoka Variator was a nice upgrade from stock for $50 and it allows better control of RPM without having to ditch the electric starter. But if you want the best performance, you may need to sacrifice a bit of money and convenience and go for a true overrange variator like the Melosi. The totally stock CBT performed well with my mild engine, but it had much more RPM spread than any other combo and can effectively control RPM and speed. To sum it all up, nothing that I tried would outperform the complete overrange kit, but if you're willing to invest the time and effort, you can probably come up with a CVT that works well without spending a fortune. Tuning is not one size fits all, so maybe you can find something that you like better than any store-bought transmission, even if it's not necessarily the quickest or fastest. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful or entertaining. Thanks for watching.